actually done with the book of love <laughs> but uh, we will have uh, two more sessions to wind up that thing and move on to the next book uh, today uh, i will take certain parts from the end part of the book of love and little background connected with that basically the points which are there connected with the end passage of savitri are very deep and uh, we have to see uh, several shades which come here yeah you see the uh, last section begins with this 105.1 then down the narrow path where their lives had met he led and showed to her her future world love's refuge and corner of happy solitude that is how the last section opens you see now here there are significant hints suggestions of an occult kind in this one the narrow path the narrow path in this mortal world where there are so many uncertainties where there are vicissitudes of life this may happen that may happen but for a particular thing to happen the path is really narrow savitri samvaya satyavani samvaya how they are going to meet and how they are going to be together and all that i mean there is so much of uncertainty uh, in the working of nature here that we cannot really imagine that they could really meet at all and therefore we have got a narrow path in the way of the world this is a narrow path actually in in the language of physics we would say that the cross section of the interaction <laughs> is very very small minuscule that the two people come together and just meet here one may come here and one may go like that you see not really interact at all see so th that can happen easily so the cross section of interaction is very small there in the language of physics so that is why it is narrow path that they should really come together and collide so to say and then produce the results you see like that you see narrow path then he says very important phrase here where their lives had met this is not for the first time that they are going to meet this is not the first time where they will come together here at this point in this place meet and do something whatever is to be done here their life means in other words this is a meeting which is going on life after life from time to time like that and therefore where their lives had met he led and showed to her her future world now that is the future world narrow path their lives had met their future world although in the language of the story it is a very simple matter the path is very narrow and they are going together in their meeting here and uh, uh, they have come together somehow had met here earlier and future world it means that they will get married they will live together and that kind of a thing that is what uh, the story line would mean but the future world has a different connotation here obviously a new creation new beginning of things it is that which will start happening from this particular moment onward it has already taken place they have met together and love is a fuse and corner of happy solitude that is the corner of happy solitude so it is in a certain sense this is the corner of happy solitude you see <laughs> absolutely you know nobody is around they are there together they meet only trees mountains rivers and things like that all around you see they meet here and things will happen here from them you see happy solitude of course 
in the context of their coming together, of joining into each other's life, the marriage has taken place. Therefore, happy, solitude, all the surroundings are there. There is nobody else around to watch them. You see, they have come together and will be here all together. Then, at the pass end, through a green cleft in the trees, she saw a clustering line of hermit roots and looked now first on her heart's future home, the thatch that covered the life of Satyavan. So at the end of that narrow path, you have got a group of thatches, parna kutis, as we would say in Sanskrit. Parna means leaf, dry leaf. Kuti means where you stay in this little house. So there are a lot of uh, hermitages like that, and the rishi, the sages, the people who are going to do spiritual practices, they will be staying there, hermit roots. Therefore, it is also the mood of anchorites. The solitude is a mood of anchorites who have abandoned the world, who have abandoned the secular life, and who have devoted themselves now entirely to the spiritual pursuit. It is in that place they are going to meet here. The thatch that covered the life of Satyavan, adorned with creepers and red climbing flowers. We have seen last time the red climbing flowers. Madhu Malati is one of the examples which uh, comes to my mind. All of them shining their lustrous, you see, all these beautiful trees are there, you see. And then it is these which are adorning the um, place, you see. It's a very lovely tree, and uh, as I told you, the significance of this flower, the meaning given by the mother for this flower is called faithfulness. Faithfulness, to be together, faithfully, you see. So it is very significantly brought out uh, in the poetic connotation also here. Red climbing flower is seeing the sylvan beauty in a dream slumbering with brown body and tumbled hair in a chamber in violet of emerald, you see, emerald, all green trees, forests, in that, you see. Around it stretched a forest anchorite mood. That is the important thing, forest anchorite mood. The spiritual atmosphere is there all around, and in that atmosphere they are meeting here. Actually, there is a certain sense of uh, anchorite mood uh, in, in this place, you know. Solitude is there, anchorite is there, very quiet, very calm. This is a picture of the Western Ghats, lost in the depths of its own solitude. Then, moved with the deep joy, she could not speak. A little depth of it quivering in her words. We have seen this last time. Her happy voice cried out to Satyavan, my heart will stay here on this forest verge and close to this thatched roof while I am far. Yes, I have to go back and report to my father while I have to go back, but my heart will stay here with you. Now of more wandering, it has no need. She has been traveling from place to place for months and months. Now that is all over. This is the place where I am going to stay now in future. This is the place. But I must haste back to my father's house, which soon will lose one loved accustomed trait. She will be moving in the palace, in the halls, in the gardens, and all that thing. And everybody in the family will be very familiar with that uh, moment of Savitri there in the house, you see, the princess, the royal princess, radiant daughter. But now all my relatives, my colleagues, my friends there, they will miss me there in the palace because I had to leave the palace and come back and stay here. And listen in vain for a once cherished voice. That is the cherished voice of Savitri. For soon I shall return. Yes, I have to come back here shortly, very soon. Nor ever again oneness must sever its recovered place. Yes, I will come back unless something else happens. As I said, the two possibilities that somebody else higher up decides that this bliss of joining together must be broken, separated, or severed. Somebody else up there, well, it is a destiny or whatever you call it, or higher will, it is a possibility, she is saying like that, you see. Or fate, the forces of nature work in such a way that 
we separate again for whatever is in the or fates and uh, our lives while life is ours but if this so things don't happen i can assure you that i will come back soon i will be here shortly soon i shall return amen once more she mounted on the carbon car now this is the puzzling line <laughs> puzzling line we have seen that thing earlier also to some extent but uh, we can revisit this line obviously here the next line says and under the azure of fiery noon so all that thing is happening when the sun is at the zenith at the top bright sun the marriage has taken place at the noon and as i said earlier that noon is a significant thing because it is exactly one year after this moment satyavan will die so that noon is is important from that angle you see at every point you see that you see let's write that is a, a bit of a poetry all right now mounted on the carvan car the puzzle is satyavan and savitri have met together somewhere now he has taken her to show his her future home that is he his touch where his parents stay this is the place this is the house where i live he is showing it to her and now she is mounting the carbon car and going back the frames which are missing here are something like this savitri and satyavan have met here the hearts are here touches are here did they walk like that together or they came together with a chariot and after showing that place she takes the chariot again and goes away does it happen or they walk back from the thatch to the place where they met where the chariot is standing he said descend from the chariot and from that point onward they are walking so it means that they are walking from that place to the place where dimusena satyavan stays they are walking there and in other words they had to now go back again from that place to the place where the chariot is parked is staying they have gone together they have come back together again it's like that the chariot is not following them at all it is savitri who, who herself is driving the chariot so the chariot is left here and therefore they had to go together unless you say that savitri is walking back alone to this chariot and he says bye bye or whatever it is you see <laughs> it's not that they are going together to the place where the chariot is and from there then she mounts the chariot and goes back returns to the palace from there tries back. basically i mean that is what the narrative is here but uh, in the the <coughs> uh, original story as we have in the mahabharat vasa savitri this whole scene is missing is not present there at all is the book of love so to say is not present in mahabharata story of vasa savitri it is not present there at all book of love is not there in that sense. he he simply described that she is going from place to place wandering from place to place in search of a future life partner and that's all and then she immediately comes back to the palace and there in the palace she sees nara sitting with her parents what has happened in between that is kept away by vyasa shivanu has taken that particular portion and elaborated here in great detail in the book of love in other words the book of love is missing in the mahabharata story but what is missing in shivendu story is the ritualistic part of the marriage yeah, the ritualistic marriage the vedic ceremony of the marriage yeah. that is not vyasa describes that he describes that thing in great detail yeah he he describes that thing you see now uh, uh, we will see that thing shortly 
basically your point was last time and uh, well I, it cannot be really answered but it is there the, why is it that Savitri has to come back and meet Satyavan and live with him why can't Satyavan go and stay <laughs> with Savitri you see well uh, there are there are there are uh, aspects of civilization aspects of tradition aspects of culture and the ancient culture you can say was uh, of a different type than what we have now here basically it was an agro based civilization <clears throat> the property the land there was no industries as such it was an agro based civilization everything was it was a patriarchal society basically it was a patriarchal society and therefore what happens is in the house of the patriarch basically so when the girl gets married she goes from her parents house to the house new house where her husband stays there you see because the whole property there she is now the lakshmi the goddess of wealth and fortune who has come to a new house the, the girl coming after the marriage to the house it means that she has brought fortune she has brought lakshmi well riches to the house so she is most welcome there she is treated in a very royal way from that point of view you see there and being a patriarchal society being an agro based society that is how the uh, uh, systems evolved develop and the very word sanskrit word for marriage is vivah vivah that's the sanskrit word for marriage vivah now the etymological root of the word is we together vah vah second part vah means carry it is the girl who is carried for the boy to the new house that is what the vivah means it is the girl who is taken carried by him to a new house and she is going to build a new creation in his place there in his house he is going to create she is going to create a new world in his house vah means carry basically uh, yeah to carry away the journey of the newly wedded bride to her husband's place that is the meaning of the word vivah the journey means carrying journeying from her house to the new house is it means that is so now that is the meaning of the traditional uh, marriage which is there in the patriarchal societies and the ancient societies lived like that you see it happened always like that everywhere you see in the modern times are of course different in, in fact nobody stays nowhere <laughs> after the marriage they establish their own new household basically you see but here being uh, a joint family or a, uh, whatever you want to call it that kind of a system it is she who comes and builds up a new creation there in the love so, so that way i think it is perfectly uh, uh, understandable why savitri has to come back and stay with satyavan and not satyavan staying <laughs> with savitri's parents in fact his personality will not develop will not flower under the weight of some other patriarch and elderly person his personality will not flower there at all you see if his personality has to flower it will be under his own parents they are the ones who will make it flower you see <laughs> so she has to uh, come back and stay there that is the way of looking at it essentially as i said the word vivah is a very significant word from that point of view she is carried to the new house and therefore she stay there now remain with her her heart's constant scene and as i told you prefer to heaven her soul's temple and home this thatch this satyavan is her temple as we have seen earlier many times savitri is described as the perfect temple for the god of love perfect shrine for the god of love for satyavan but now it is this place which is a temple for savitri 
Yeah. For me, there is another poem which yes. is more important, and I didn't. Uh, I would like to speak about it. That uh, the fact that Trovillo uh, make Salieri, uh, uh, which is the mother of I. Yeah. That when she met with a human being, yes. with such a man, why she has to leave and to come back after? What he means by this? When what does he mean? He means when we we find the mother divine, why she has to leave? Why she has to go back to her father and leave? Her father or her mother? But yeah. Why when she met such a man? Why go and report him? Story, huh? yeah. I mean the, the true meaning of uh, the divine mother and the human being. When they met together, why now they have to separate? Take the permission, permit, take the permission from the elders. Basically, it amounts to that. Yeah, but what what uh, Shobindo means by this? Uh, why the divine mother uh, should leave the human being once he found her? Why did he turn? The the setting of Savitri. The setting of Savitri is uh, basically a legend. Yeah, I know. It is a legend. So legend means it is a traditional story, essentially based on uh, Rasa Savitri, essentially. Now, the traditional society, the way in which they develop things, their culture, was like that. No, I mean, no it was not, it's not my question. Yeah. I don't mind at all the legend. Yeah. But he means by this the human being and the divine master, no? Yeah. That's what we understand from Savitri, no? I mean, uh, in transition, she. Yeah, in transition. What he means in this uh, book five, when finally they meet together, yeah. why they have to separate again? Yeah. You see, the, uh, the, look, I mean, let, let us read this sentence. 104.21. The natural miracle was once wrought once more. In the immutable ideal world, one human moment was eternal made. Now basically, they are all right supernatural beings, both Satyavan and Savitri, they are not ordinary human beings, they are supernatural in that sense. But then, they had taken human forms, because through human form, they had to work out certain details, certain things. They had to accept all the conditions of mortality, of humanity. They have accepted. That does not mean that they are alienated from their divine nature. But they have to work out the whole thing, the whole process through the mortal birth, the human birth. And therefore they accept the human condition, the human ways of doing things, human systems, conditions, traditions, or what you want to call them. It is only by accepting them that they can change those things. They can change things, only them. Without accepting, it's not that by uh, up there you wave a wand and things will change here. Then it's a miracle. He doesn't want that kind of a miracle here. It has to be worked out from within, from below. Yeah, otherwise he can simply fool and then things change. It's not like that. So the entire mortal process, things have to proceed and go. Therefore, he says, once more, not once more, the miracle has already taken place elsewhere. And what does he say? Where, where has that marriage taken place, basically? In the high glowing cupola of the world, no? At the noon hour, like that. The moon, huh? in the moon, the moon. yeah, that's right. Yeah, but then he says, where? In the immutable ideal world, 
it is not on the physical pain here <laughs> it is it is here which has taken place the marriage has taken place here and it is there because it has taken place the human moment has become eternal the human moment has become eternal because of that unless this happens unless that immutable ideal world it is done there things cannot happen here cannot happen here Huh? Yeah. And he says natural, obviously, because he has taken this one, one human moment. One human moment. <coughs> It has to become like that. Otherwise, the humanity uh, is not going to be touched by the divine unless the divine himself accepts that. Hmm. on the high glowing cupola of the day fate tied and not with morning's halo threads while with the ministry of now this is this is happening where this is happening all in the immutable ideal world is all happening there <laughs> now so i believe that i mean satyavan and savitri they must have walked from the place where they met to the hermitages and then again they must have come together and then savitri has taken the chariot and she is going back to her father's place you see now it could mean it could easily mean that uh, at least 15 minutes 20 minutes they must have walked from that place there <laughs> it may be about a kilometer about a mile away from uh, their house where they met you see perhaps in morning see only 15 minutes huh? roughly yeah. see it can't be see we have we have given a span of only 4 hours for the entire yeah for the entire after after that marriage she has gone there she has gone and again at the noon she has to go back so it must be maximum 15 minutes what <laughs> one way 15 minutes again another 15 minutes back to see <laughs> if you want to put geographically like that you see <laughs> then uh, race is of course here but i must haste back is it is it all that you see Once more she mounted on the car one car and under the azure of a fiery noon she sped swiftly. So uh, now obviously she is excited. She is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, very impatient to come back. So she is moving very fast. Swift rain. Her horses are now moving really, really fast. You see, her heart beat is also beating very fast. The curious bloom in May of tree. This now remained with her and has constant seen. Now. Uh, as i told you last time we have uh, in the tradition uh, eight types of marriages and this particular marriage what we have here is the gandharva marriage the love marriage of the two together and joining together but then the uh, uh, ritualistic part the sacramental part of the marriage although it is not presented by shri bandhu is there in vyasa savitri i will quickly see that thing see now after this marriages we have here a wonderful description of the marriage ceremony which is described in the rigveda the marriage of surya and soma surya is the daughter of the sun god is a poor savitri da savitri as surya savitra his uh, progeny is savitra savitra feminine is savitri feminine is savitri his progeny 
of sun god savitra savitra is a sun god his issues are savitra male and female savitri so savitri is the daughter of sun god here the marriage of surya is talking about the same thing basically savitri is it and soma soma is in the common language chandra moon or the god of happiness of joy of bliss he is the god of bliss soma you see now there is a description it's a very long description very elaborate description also but i made a small selection in rigveda mandala 10 sukta 85 this description appears about the marriage of surya and soma so we will quickly see what it means is a few sentences i have picked up from the lovely was surya's robe the marriage ceremony he is describing the bridal dress was lovely thought was the pillow of her couch so it is her thought which is the pillow not the physical <laughs> pillow you see sight was the lotion in her eyes whatever they put anjana for the lotion sight is the lotion of that for her eye her treasury was earth and heaven that is her richness surya's richness is earth and heaven and sight is the lotion of her eyes the, the color or whatever you want to call it she puts there is the sight itself you see soma wood the maid the sun god savitra bestowed his willing daughter surya on her lord soma it is sun god savitra who is offering his daughter to soma you see her spirit became the bridal car we have in savitri the carvan car but here her spirit itself is the chariot is the car she is going in the chariot of the spirit the covering thereof was heaven what is the roof of that heaven <laughs> of that car bright and steady were the steers the horses they are driving the car they are bright obviously luminous lustrous surya mounted the spirit fashion car and proceeded to her lord well you see <laughs> to her lord the gods perfected the union of the wife and husband the marriage was performed in the presence of the gods and they perfected that ceremony of that marriage together in savitri also when satyavan and savitri see each other for the first time the chance of that they might not have seen each other at all he would have gone one way she would have gone away okay she has been seeing so many people all along he has been also seeing so many women girls etc they would have just gone away but then yeah, the god touched in time and the miracle was done the god touched in time the god perfected the union he, he saw that this does happen her hue is blue and red the fiend who clung close is driven off before the marriage it is traditionally said that for the girl even for the boy also for the girl there is pati vedana the egg for a husband she has attained puberty she is now longing for a husband for a union you see so that egg which is there that is driven off the fiend which is there that is driven off and they have joined together you see that is what it means you see the fiend who clung close is driven off that is one way of saying the other one is traditionally it is said that before the marriage the girl is in union with gandharva with gandharva the the <laughs> celestial being he is in, huh? he is in union with the gandharva they 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 I mean, she is not union physically, but she is always thinking of some uh, uh, bright husband, future husband like that. Now, what happens? The moment the marriage is now decided between the boy and the girl, that Gandharva disappears. 
he is no more needed there <laughs> he is no more needed there you see that has disappeared so let not the highway thieves find the wedded pair so these people who come and haunt that girl they have now disappeared because she has got her beloved with them by pleasant ways let them escape the danger signs of good fortune mark the bright agni is invoked to give progeny to them that is the sacrament that is the ceremony that is the samskara as you say the samskara is it is in the presence of agni that the marriage the union has taken place and the purpose is that it is agni who will bestow them the progeny the new generation agni is the form builder the new forms new creation it is his work you see also splendor and ample life obviously you say let them live for a hundred years there is a tradition long lived he be who is her lord how long a hundred autumns let him live hundred autumns <coughs> shatam sharada shatam sharada shatam means hundred autumn sharada let hundred seasons be seen by them together you see hundred life now so that is the blessing which is given at the time of the marriage of surya and soma in the vedic tradition you see and of course here this blessing comes in a different way to satyavan to savitri she goes back to her father's place and then there is narad sitting there and he is to tell look one year after the marriage this boy is going to die <laughs> so this is going to be some 100 years you see <laughs> but that 100 year is of a different kind you see <laughs> the bride is taken solemnly from her father's house to the dwelling of her future husband here on her arrival the marriage is performed the ceremony of the bridal robe that of taking her hand and circumambulation of the sacred fire and setting up into new home follow the chanting of the hymns that is the sacrament that is the traditional marriage surya rides gold hued chariot this is what we have seen surya fourth to the world immortal where did she go the world of immortality <coughs> that is why her chariot is also gold hued straight be the path thornless led by aryamana and bhaga aryamana it is he who prepare the huge path for the future aryamana and bhaga he is the lord of enjoyment of joy of happiness of blessings she is set free from the previous knots all her past is gone in the marriage even as the marriage knot is tied so the marriage knot is tied but the previous knots are dissolved it's you that it's you giving birth to fine sons may she dwell in happiness signs of good fortune attain the bride surya shines in beautiful colors prayer is offered to agni to grant children to the bride later on this is what savitri is going to get the boons well that is how it goes on the marriage between surya and soma is the archetype typical marriage that is the important thing because if the marriage is happening elsewhere archetypal marriage soma is the first husband of every wife paras surya the wife of every husband vivah leading away the wife from her father's house that is the traditional sense of the word vivah the bridegroom touches the heart of the bride and says let your heart become my heart and your mind my mind according to the traditional sutra graha sutra then they take seven steps together and marriage is a cosmic act in that process well what we have here is the divine act in shivanu's marriage the divine act which is taking place now let us see what happens in the case of vyasa savitri yes see as i said savitri 
was going from place to place for a long time according to the description here and the story kind of abruptly breaks there. She goes back to her father's place and there she sees Narad there and then she narrates what has happened during her journey. She, there is no mention of their meeting together anywhere, Satyavan and Savitri, but she discloses that thing for the first time to her father in the presence of Narada. So, at the command of her father, that is Ashwapati, Savitri sets out in the quest of her future husband. That is what we have seen earlier. She goes from place to place for years, for months. She rides a golden chariot and travels to several near and far distant places, moves through kingdoms and penance groves of the sages. Even as she visits temples and holy places, she gives great charities to people. She makes offering donations to people because she's a princess, a royal princess. So she lavishly gives charities to all the people. And then suddenly what happens? She returns after that long, long journey and finds her father in the company of Narad. To them, to Narad and her father, to them, she discloses the choice she had made in Satyavan as her husband. For the first time in the story here, we see that they have met together here like that. Narad speaks of his death one year after his marriage, but Savitri remains firm in her resolve. Seeing that Savitri decision is founded in virtuous principles, Narad approved the choice and blesses them all good life and good fortune. This is, yes, everything will be all right, although he is having only one year life as per the, but you are. Then he says, Ashwapati gives now, this is the new description which is not there in Shabinu Savi. Ashwapati, after Savitri had disclosed her choice in Satyavan, then Ashwapati, her father, starts making preparations for the marriage ceremony. Ashwapati gives attention to the details of giving his daughter in marriage. The traditional part here. The marriage party sets out to Shalva forest, where in the hermitages live Satyavan, and his parents engaged in tapasya. In the hermitage, Satyavan and his parents, they are engaged in spiritual practices here. Ashtapati makes a formal offer to Satyavan's father. He goes to the forest, Shalva forest. He sees that the old man, the blind man, is sitting under a sala tree, that is, a bony tree, he is sitting there, meditating and all that. So Ashwapati approaches him and introduces himself to him and at that point of time he is received by Jumasena, uh, Satyavan's father. And the first thing which he does, whenever a guest comes like that, a respected guest, the tradition is some gift is given to the guest first. So Jumasena gives the gift of cow to Ashwapati. Cow is a holy symbol of affection and love and plenty of that thing. Cow is physically the cow, but cow, as Shabandu has explained in great detail in the secret of the Veda, his word is go. Go means bright, light, shine. It is that which is now given as a present to Ashwapati by Dhyumasena. And then he makes an inquiry. Satyavan's father makes an inquiry with Ashwapati, please let me know what is the purpose of your coming and visiting me here. What for you have come here after that formal introduction. And then he says, Dumasinov is giving his daughter in marriage. To the marriage, then what happens? Ashwapati tells him, look, I have got a young daughter and she is of a marriageable age and I wish to offer her as your daughter-in-law to your son Satyavan. In the beginning, Savitri, sorry, Jumasena, uh, that is Satyavan's father, he has hesitation in accepting that offer. Yes, it's a very 
great thing you are doing, but I am sorry, I am not in a position to accept your offer of your daughter for my son, because I am a destitute. I am living in a forest. I am I have abandoned everything. I don't have kingdom to match with your glory and majesty. I don't have those things. How can we be equals in such a marriage? That is the kind of an argument Bhimasena makes. So then Ashwapati replies, "Look, I have already given thought to that aspect. Yes, I know that you have lost your kingdom. You don't have anything which you hear. Still, I want." This offer to be made, and please say, please say no to this offer of mine. He insists on that, you see, and then the Jyotisana explains that it's a wonderful thing that this had been a long wish of mine that our two families come together through blood relationship. Now that it is happening this way. I am feeling extremely happy that your family and my family they are joining together to this marriage. I feel extremely happy about that kind of a thing. So this is the kind of an argument they uh, make with each other. And then Dumasena is giving his daughter in marriage to Satya. The marriage is duly solemnized by the learned Brahmins in the presence of the rishis and elders in the hermitages. That is the sacramental part of the marriage which is done there. The ceremony follow the prescribed rites and fire offerings between Satyavan and Savitri. The marriage party then departs, and Savitri lays aside all her rich ornaments, her jewelry, her beautiful clothes, and all that. Even as a princess, the moment her parents go away after the marriage, she keeps away all the things. And she lives a bare and simple life, fit for the hermitage in the forest. That is the kind of a life she accepts there, etc. So this is what we have in Savitri. This part is not there in Shivendu Savitri because he says it's an ideal world. The marriage has taken. There is no necessity to go and describe all the rituals and all that thing. It has already been done, finished. You can fill up the details in the way in which you want in your mind. You see. <laughs> Now uh, we'll do something quickly of a slightly different kind. Uh, as I told you earlier, also on one occasion, that Savitri Book of Love is a very sweet book. Very sweet book, you see, and the kind of flavor which is there, the rasa, the essence which is there, you would not find not only elsewhere in Savitri, but anywhere else in the entire literature. The rasa of the book of love is absolutely divine in its content, and it is that new flavor. Which has come into expression, into poetry, which does not exist anywhere at all. You see, now according to the classical Indian system of enjoying the creative art, in the most general sense, the creative art, there are different types of flavors, and Bharata. So he he initiated the theory of aesthetic enjoyment. Bharat, he the first uh, uh, aesthetician who has given the theory of literary enjoyment, and according to him, there are eight main flavors. Eight main flavors of uh, creative art, and the. The uh, eight flavors are shringara, that is love; hasya, that is laughter; raudra, fury; karunya, compassion, pity; vibhatsa, disgust; bhayanak, horror; 
terrifying, you see. Viram, heroic mood, adbhuta, amazement, wonder. So he says that in a rich creative art, in different shades, all these rasas, all these flavors will be present. Shingara, Hasya, Raudra, Vibhatsa, Bhayanak, Veera, and Adhuta. These are the eight rasas according to him. Now, what we have most prominently in the Book of Love is this Shingara rasa. The Book of Love. The form of romantic beauty and joy and happiness. Something which comes from the depths of your heart. That is the Shingara rasa, you see. Now, according to Bhanata, each of this flavor, rasa, is presided by a deity, by a god. The deity who presides the Shringara, the love, is Vishnu himself. Vishnu is the cook. Vishnu is the god of love. And it is he who presides this rasa, this flavor. So when we read Shebandu Savitri, Book of Love, the person who really stands in front of us, should stand in front of us, is Vishnu. In his beautiful form, in his bright form. It is he who should really come out in front of us, Vishnu, you see. Then of course there is Hasya, Marth, Pramatha, Raudra, Fury, anger, the presiding deity is Rudra, that is Shiva, and his color is red. Karunya, compassion, Yama himself is the presiding deity of compassion. In fact, that is what we have in a certain sense, Yama here. Book of, I mean, death is what that means, Karunya. Vibhatsa, disgusting, which is repulsive, which is ugly which throws you back aversion, the Pisani deity is Shiva, and the color is blue. Bhayanak, horror. We have some, some of these things there in Savitri. We shall see them as separately. Presently, what we have got is only the Shingara part of it, this part of it, you see, Shingara. Viram, heroic mood, when Savitri is fighting against Yama, against death, then you see the heroic action of Savitri there, fully, you see. And Adbhuta, the book of your lasting day, that is the most amazing kind of thing, wonder. So that is what we have got in book 11, Adbhuta, wonder and amazement, in that canto, you see. Now these are the basic rasas, and we do find in Savitri, this present in different degrees in different places, according to this rule. In fact, that is the richness of an epic. Epic must have all these flavors, all these aspects of human emotion, human relationship, human aesthetic enjoyment. Then only the epic becomes complete, not until then. And we have this thing that here, this particular book is depicting the Shringara or of it. Well, uh, let me show you. One second, huh? yeah. One second. Now, see, this is the, I don't know whether you are able to see this in properly. Yeah. Shringara, the Bharat Natyam, how the bhava is shown, how she depicts the Shringara part of it. Shringara, so you see, Bharat Natyam. And this is Raudra, fiery. This is Raudra. This is the fiery part of it. You can see her face. Durga, really, she is uh, <laughs> furious. See. Her eyes, particularly, see the expression here? All. Yeah. That is Raudra part of it, you see. Raudra, bhava, mood. This is Raudra mood, bhava, mood, you see. And she is depicting it very nicely, this one. Mm -hmm. And this is the Shringara part of it. Uh, 
ಅದ್ಭುತ ನಾವು ವಾಟ್ ಭರತ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ಯ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದಿ ಥಿಯರಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಥೆಟಿಕ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಡ್ರಾಮಾ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ರಸ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎ ನೈನ್ತ್ ರಸ ಬೈ ಅಭಿನವ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಗೋ ಅಭಿನವ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ್ ಅಭಿನವ ಸಜೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ನೈನ್ತ್ ರಸ ಶಾಂತಮ್ ಆರ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ವಿಲಿಟಿ ನಾವು ಇಸ್ ಕಲರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ಲೂ ಇಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಇನ್ ಎ ವೇ ಭರತ್ ಈ ಜಸ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನಿಂಗ್ ಶಾಂತ ರಸ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಸ್ ದಿ ರಸ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ಗುಡ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ವಿಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಕರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರೌದ್ರ in a very very peaceful dignified noble manner and it is assumed that that shanta rasa is present behind the raudra behind the shringara it is assumed that it is taken unless that base is there that support is there that aadhar is there that rasa cannot sustain itself so in that sense i will say bharat was quite justified not explicitly mentioning separately the shanta rasa the flavor of peace the quality in fact even when you go to the most horrifying most fearful descriptions in savitri book 2 canto 8 the descent into the night the world of falsehood ignorance and all that kind of thing. even when you go there you don't really get afraid of them because the base on which it is founded is the shant the peace it is that peace which will protect you everywhere even even when you enter in that region it does not touch you at all you see you enjoy it you see it you witness it but you don't get affected of because you are already always surrounded by the luminous peace which is always there with you so it is understood that the shanta rasa is all pervasive in all the rasas and therefore it need not be explicitly mentioned and i will justify uh, bharat in not <laughs> mentioning or pointing out separately and perhaps it is to some extent a kind of an analytical mind which came later on in abhinava that he introduced shanta rasa in the ninth rasa it is not necessary in my in my way of thinking what do you say you agree yes yeah you know some 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 this session of shanti 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 shantam 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 yeah shantam is an adjective shanti is a kind of noun yeah same thing basically om shanti 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 that is what we trying to say shantam peaceful quiet tranquil this color calm and white ah huh? calm and white yeah so why do you say i have one color white is white is also a color yes so, so but all the colors have derived from white white right, that's right exactly so is is the basic rasa is the basic rasa which is pervasive it is it is it is you can say no no it is not color that they have merged into each other it is not it is the base the support for any expression it so is a base. It is the no no it is not a support no it is kind of masking all the other rasas all the other colors shanta is the base the support the aadhar sthayi bhav on which you stand it is it is in that corner seven is dictating line after line line after line line after line without 
kind of getting so to say emotionally disturbed or perturbed or uh, affected by them whether you describing uh, falsehood or ignorance or divine mother or fight with yama or whatever the same flow the same shanta is present everywhere throughout when you describing sakti yoga when you describing ashwapati yoga when you describing the meeting of ashwapati and the divine mother it is a shanta rasa which is always present there even in the book of love behind the shringara what do you really see the shringara becomes prominent and luminous and acceptable because behind it under it is the shanta any line you read from savitri's book of love you see below that the tranquility always present so these are the different bhavas or the moods of expression love mirth sorrow anger energy terror disgust astonishment that is how things go on now this is what we have got in the traditional theory of the rasas does she even to subscribe to this theories of bharat in a way yes in a different way he takes it forward he takes it forward and for any aesthetic enjoyment and expression and fulfillment what has to appear ultimately are these five sons in the context of poetry he says the five sons should dazzle in your work the five sons the son of truth whatever you say is founded on truth is truth son of beauty of aesthetic perfection sun not delight it has to be happiness joy in the expression even if you are describing ugly thing it has to be a kind of a different joy to really go behind the spirit of that ugliness and see what it is made of how it has become so that delight the sun of life of vivacity of living together and of course the sun of power the strength it has to be there so so only the sun the five suns are present no artistic work would be really fulfilling according to shrevandu's future poetry all these five sun should shine out and when they do shine out then you have the true the most revealing mantra the utterance which comes out then becomes the mantric utterance of course it can happen that in some place it is the sun of truth which is brighter the sun of life or the sun of life brighter somewhere than the sun of beauty it is that aspect which comes out but all the five suns had to be simultaneously present in different degrees in different proportions they had to be present there then only the work becomes really complete and in the context of poetry when shivanu speaks of the five suns of poetry and when they are working in the creator's consciousness the artist then he says that we have what he calls the overhead poetry the origin of overhead poetry lies in the presence of this five suns overhead which is above the mental levels he describes five four steps of overhead consciousness higher mind illumined mind intuition and over mind so that is the overhead poetry now the overhead poetry will come out in different degrees when the different suns are present in it when they are present here of course we are living in the world of our mind and therefore the highest expression is our mind the supramental world is yet to come that will come 
with the arrival of the supramental being, the supramental race. <laughs> we don't know what it will be, but uh, it is bound to come there, you see. So the, in the book of love, what we might say is that the first three suns shine in their majestic splendor. In the book of love, you see. With the sun of beauty leading the other two. Sun of beauty is more prominent than the sun of truth and sun of the light, you see. So if you have to really kind of assess from the point of view of poetic quality, the Book of Love, I will say, the most prominent is the Son of Beauty, supported by other. In the Book of Love, the first three suns shine in the majestic splendor, the Son of Beauty leading the other two, you see. In other places, there are other things, you see. Actually, this needs a much greater discussion, explanation, understanding, analysis. But this is enough to get a little idea of what the aesthetic theory would kind of lead us to, where it should lead us to. Book of Love is, in that sense, is very significant book from that point of view. It stands out very prominently. Exactly. 